Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and today I am going to be showing you how to make this rather scrumdiddlyumptious coaster. So for this I've used basil from the Basil and BB Mice stamps and a fair bit of fab foils and one of the new stencils, Dynamic, and a fair bit of, wait for it, Posca pens and acrylic sprays. And I've started off by preparing my coaster, my wooden MDF shape, with gesso. So there's a fair few things that I'm going to be talking you through today. Um, enough of me talking here. Let's crack on and get down to the business end. Hello. So here we have two of the MDF shapes that you can get from Lavinia Stamps in a pack of four and some gesso, which I've just popped on my craft mat. I have got a rather um, scrappy looking paintbrush deliberately because I do tend to put my gesso on with paintbrushes that I don't use for watercolours. Um, there we go. So I've put my first coat on going one way and I've let it dry. Then I'm putting my second coat on the other way. That's just personal taste. I tend to do them in opposite directions. And now we're moving on to the paint. So I'm checking it's dry and there you can see I've put out the acrylic sprays and the mystical micas I'm using. I'm giving a base coat in sun yellow, then Indian sunset mystical mica around the outside, round the outside, and bumblebee mystical mica in the centre, perhaps with a touch of golden temple. And I'm squishing it, <laughs> putting two together to squish so that basically I get two for the price of one. Bargain. There we go. If you're not happy with it, just get your paintbrush out and just make sure that you've got bits covered. And if you want more on it, I've just added some golden temple. Nah, -uh. let it dry. There we go. I'm using a Posca pens. Here we go. White. I've just pushed it down to create a reservoir of ink. And there I'm measuring where the light is going to go when I stamp basil to the coaster. And behind that, I'm making sure that I've already got white or the shine, if you like, for the light. So I've just put some watered down Posca on with my paintbrush. And then with, a, with the pen, I'm just creating spikes. It just gives me an idea of where I want the dots to go later. And here I am. I've inked up that stamp in archival black ink and just stamped it right over where the light goes. And here goes the dots. And I'm off. Dot, 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 dot. Just creating a gentle shine. And now I'm moving on to the stencil. For this, I'm using Elements Henna colour. And one of the new stencils from Lavinia Stamps called Dynamic. And I'm using this with a blender just to give a subtle frame to the piece. And also, it just gives a hint that perhaps there is a darkness outside of the light that Basil is shining. Rather than being a solid darkness, it's just a hint. I do like this stencil. It adds movement where there isn't any. It's lovely. So obviously I've sped myself up here because, you know, I don't move that fast. And if I did it real time, you'd be here for a long time. There we go. Slowing down again. I rather like that. So I've got the Posca pens out again. And that's just yellow dots that I'm putting in here and there to add up the white. And a green Posca pen, again, pushing it down on the craft mat to create a reservoir of ink. Adding a little bit of water to it and using the smallest paintbrush I have to follow the line of the pattern, but at the same time create a base for basil to stand on. Now I've chosen green because it makes me think of grass. And at the moment it's just a block of green, but we will be working into that to give it another little bit of texture. So we're just following the swirling pattern. And don't, you know, don't be frightened of going up and around where the swirling pattern goes. Maybe you might think, well, the grass wouldn't do that. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. We're following the pattern 
And there you can see I'm starting to do upward strokes. But we will get to that later on. And I love the added depth that just putting a little bit of colour on gives to it. Fab. Right, now this is the apple green pen. Posca again, that I'm using. And I'm just literally finding where I want the grass stalk to start from and going upwards with it to create this little highlight. And I'm back to my dots again. You see, I'm really sorry, folks. I like dotting and I'm taking the light further out towards the pattern at the top. So here you can see um, when you stamp on top of mystical micas, even with archival, sometimes it doesn't take as dark as you would like it to. So all I've done is used the ink from a Posca and popped it on my paintbrush and filled in the bits I want to be a bit darker. I have left others because the effect is nice near his tummy where the light would be hitting and, and the lower of his chin. And there you can see I've added some orange Posca dots just to break it up a bit more. And now we're at the bit where you add some bling. So here's our two-way glue pen, my old favourite. And again, I'm following the bits that are still yellow in that pattern. The bits I left behind. And I love this glue pen because with fab foils, it's just so simple to make your piece come alive again with a bit of bling. So I'm just heating it up to the point where it becomes tacky, a bit like... Um, on the underside of sellotape, you know, and just popping my gold foil colour side up and burnishing it with my thumb. It does say use a burnishing tool, but as I always say, I don't have one of those. I just have my thumb and my fingers. Fab foils, truly fab. Anyway, so here you can see I've sped myself up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the line of the pattern of the frame that I created with that stencil. OK, and I'm just going to go all the way around that coaster, adding some blingage. Now, obviously, I've sped myself up again because otherwise this video would be mighty long. Don't be afraid to add some dots as well if you fancy it, because I, I know I did on this. I thought, oh, I, I fancy another couple of dots in there, so you might see them. And that was just simple enough with, a, with the two-way glue pen. There we go. Heating it up, waiting for it to get tacky, and then popping the fab foil on. Burnishing it and there we go. Looks like I'm happy with that. Now, what's next, I hear you ask. So what we're going to be doing now is tackling the sides of the coaster with exactly the same technique. Two-way glue pen, heat it up, pop the fab foil on and you'll get a distressed look to the edge of your coaster. And you should be pleased with this because it's all coming together now. Fabulous. Just a nice finish on the edges. And you've done it, you know. You've done it. Once you've done this, fab. Look at it. Happy days. Well, hey, we've done it. What do you think? Are you pleased? I'm pleased. I think it's lovely. I think if I was going to do anything else, I might add a protective, protective covering of glossy accents. Not sure. Still, the jury's still out on that. But at the moment, I'm thinking I might want it as a wall hanging. So I have put... A little hanger on the back. Can you see? Little diddy hanger on the back. And there you go. I think it's rather pretty. And that is little Basil shining his light. Thank you very much for joining me today and as usual pop any comments you have in the post below and I will do my level best to give you a sensible answer. Anyway, thank you for joining me. See you soon. Take care.